just about a week ago, President Buhari was in Lagos. Today, the president is in Meduguri, where the theater and the center of insurgency war in the country. The big question is, what does this visit mean to the insurgency war the nation is uh, confronted with? And uh, what happens to the morale of the troops, which the president, you can see how he related to them. Perhaps some of the criticisms that have come into some quarters for the president to reach out. In about two weeks now, the president has visited two states. Well, is it a new style of the president now? Well, I'll allow my guest tonight to analyze for you what some of these means, the body language, the visitation, and some of the words of encouragement, what it means to the insecurity situation in the country. I'm being joined by a very experienced military officer, a retired general, General Ayol, Henry Ayola. Thank you so much, General, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. And from Meduguri, he's a federal lawmaker representing Borough New State and a Senate Committee Chair on the Army, Senator Ali Indume. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us tonight. Let's bring in the conversation evening, with Sharon, General. Good evening, viewers. Thank you, Senator. General, uh, I don't know when you were in service, when you were controlling troops on the field. Have you had an experience where the CNC visited you? Have you had that kind of experience? No, not at all. The highest I got was the Minister of Defense visiting us. Oh, okay, I had the Senate President once, and then the Minister of Defense. So what does this kind of visitation mean for the troops? This is not the first time the president is visited, but when you have in a theater of war and you have the CNC relating to injured uh, um, uh, soldiers, relating to families of uh, uh, deceased uh, soldiers, what does this mean? Oh, this means a whole lot. Uh, firstly, talking about the morale of the troops uh, is a major booster for that. Uh, and when, when we look at it from uh, the sequence and the series of events that have been happening in recent time, and the, the peak, we, we seem to have come to a point when it looks like all hell is broken loose on Nigeria. Uh, so the, what the president has done has brought about a turning point in the entire scenario, uh, a turning point in the sense that it's going to be for improved morale of the troops, is going to send a strong signal to the insurgents themselves that look, it's no longer business as usual. There is a new you know, deal and the, the president is championing it and is leading it. And when you put it side by side with the recent interview of the president, followed you know, very closely with this visit, I mean, it tells you the, the, the kind of concurrent activities that are coming up from the presidency. And I think it's, Great, great uh, kudos to our president. We'll try to get some insight because there are others so, uh, not so good news coming uh, some parts of the country uh, in Ogun State where there are kidnap of Chinese rail workers um, in uh, another part of the country where, well, this part is good because the troop neutralized terrorists. Well, just a moment because you, before you give us the technical details of what this means and where, what we should be expecting and doing, let me get to Senator. It was one of those who welcomed the president and who also saw him off uh, when he visited Meduguri. Give us a sense of what happened today. You're one of those who have uh, clamored that the military are really lacking in uh, firepower and in the hardware that is necessary to defeat the enemy. But when he said to them today, do not give the enemy's breathing space, what kind of body language did you perceive or see amongst the troops? Well, the troops are ever ready because they are on ground, they are even managing with the little they have and in the bad situation. But now we have been crying out a long time that our military is underfunded uh, and they don't have the equipment, they don't have the necessary way with that to execute the war. And uh, since January, President agreed that he is going to you know, turn around and do, uh, listen more to us and do what is uh, needful. First, he changed the service chiefs Unfortunately, we lost the chief of army staff, and then he replaced them. He replaced him with somebody who has the hands-on experience. In fact, he was a theater commander here before he was appointed major general of Faruqi Ahaya. 
And uh, you know that the president promised to bring before the National Assembly a supplementary budget, which is going to, majority of it is going to go into acquiring the necessary military hardware that is required. And he also gave the go ahead to increase the number. And then he capped it today by coming to visit the troops and uh, they are aware of the good news, but then he, they, they have heard from the horse's mouth when he addressed them at the, the theater headquarters. And he commiserated with those who lost their life and then uh, sympathized and visited, as you can see, those that are wounded and are going through the treatment. And I was uh, by the side able to talk to them and uh, I myself as the chairman committee on army. And most of the troops are saying, look, we are looking forward to getting better and going back to finish this war. And, and the, the language some of them were using was very interesting. You say we should go and finish with these bastards. Or, or, or guy, I'm looking forward to getting well and go and finish with them. And that was very encouraging, uh, particularly to the army. And besides our, our politically, uh, the president has given hope to Nigerians, first by speaking out, two now by visiting Lagos and coming to my degree, which is considered. And let me add that the president went around, I was tired, uh, for six hours. He came in 10 o'clock and we're going around to various projects until four o'clock this evening before he left. So for those of, of people who are saying the president, oh, is sick and all that. And we are going through, we went through the four corners of my degree. First, we started in Jimtilo, where the, the university is. Then we went to Memalari Barak, which is at the other end. From there, we went to Muna. Muna is outside Meduguri, and maybe you have heard their story. From there, we came back to uh, Jidari, which is also on the way to Molai. And, and he ended up going back to the airport again. We took us six hours going around. And that is very encouraging. From the interview he did with Arise TV, from the visits that he did to Lagos, and from now, I think the opposition now will go back and, and sit down to look at what else are they going to say. Uh, I would like you to also tell us, because you are on the ground, you represent the people there. And some of the stories that uh, have been reported that we hear uh, from the attacks in, in the Northeast region. And when you say the president moved around today, uh, it does speak, because some of the visuals that we see also are large numbers of people welcoming him. Does it give a sense that uh, uh, Maduguri may have is experiencing some kind of uh, uh, a new wave of uh, security, or things are relatively safe in that area, in that state? Yes, Sherwood, that's the word. Let me even say, you know, I live in Abuja and also live in Maduguri. Once I come to Maduguri, once I'm inside Maduguri, I feel safer than Abuja because somebody can knock at your door, knock down your door with a gun or that. In, in my degree, we don't, we don't I, I don't think I'm completely um, of that. It is outside my degree where, where the insurgents uh, are marooning around and they, they attacked intermittently. And that is normally uh, normal with insurgents. That's why they are even called insurgents, the uh, terrorists. They do hit and run, look at soft targets. And that is what we find ourselves now. And that's why we're encouraging the federal government to say, okay, there are the little of them remaining, just get rid of it. But let me add that in every society, you can't wipe out criminality completely at all. Even in America and other developed countries, we hear of another mad person taking a gun and start shooting people before he, they shoot him down. You can hear school sitting uh, in, in America is common. You can hear that in UK, Germany and all that. But our own, the, that we have a non-terrorist and the, the army is fighting them. I, I, I think with this new development, new budget, very soon things will get better for all of us. And let me add that you see those tons and thousands and of people that came out to receive uh, Mr. President. It's out of anxiety because the president, the, you know, he's a very likable person as you know, the masses. And today, because of what he has done or what the federal government is doing in, 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 in Borno State to support the state government who is working very hard, was a, was a, a big anxiety to, to us uh, because the federal government has done some credible things, uh, especially the, the approval by Mr. President to build 10,000 houses for, for the displaced persons, for the resettlement of them. 
And within the span of, I think, one and a half years now, they have built 4,000 within Meduguri. Others are being built in other across the affected uh, local government. Today, we had the good news, uh, we, which we had before, but from the horse's mouth, that um, the federal government has directed NNPC in conjunction with the co company to build a 50, 50 megawatt power plant, a gas power plant in, uh, in, in Meduguri. The president has approved, uh, you know, to the establishment of Federal Polytechnic in um, Mongono, which is far in the in the in one one of the the, the epicenter of uh, Boko Haram. Most of them have been displaced, but that is to give then the impression and a couple of other things. Uh, the the, uh, the federal government is is helping the state also in making sure that the road from Meduguri to Kano is completed. The railway from Meduguri to Portakot. That's a, a cheering news that the president All right. confirmed. Uh, okay, Senator, to us. Uh, we are due for a break. So, but when we come back, we will hear from the general because some of these efforts it does mean something. What does it mean for insecurity in Nigeria and the battle? The more more money that Nigeria is expecting, what does this also mean, and how can we utilize them? Plus the new responsibility for the new man, the chief of army staff. We'll be right back after this break. Everybody. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. You know that insecurity is a major problem in the country. But well, it does look like when there is an effort, it gets our attention right here. And we look at some of those issues you perhaps are not looking at, and we get people uh, in the mix of things to give a perspective and take an informed decision as a citizen. So tonight, President Muhammad Buhari was in Meduguri. He visited the troops, visited injured soldiers, and he gave a warning that do not give a breathing space to the enemies. What does that mean? A former military officer, General Henry Ayola, is here in our Lagos studio. And for Meduguri, is a federal lawmaker, Representative Bruno said, the Senate Committee Chair on the Army, Senator Ali Indume. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time. Um, General, give us a sense of that word. Do not give a breathing space to the enemy. I mean, this is coming from also a former general at the CNC. And perhaps the Senator is one of those who have said there is not enough equipment for the military to fight. And now we are hearing the supplementary budget, more money for the military. Give us a sense of what all of this means. <clears throat> Thank you very much. What, there are a whole list of uh, implications of this statement from the Commander-in-Chief himself. Number one, like I said at the beginning, it, it, it marks a turning point, a, a phase change in the entire operation. The entire operation, that, that's the operation had in Kai. Uh, when you look at it, that in the military, we usually say, don't just tell them, show them. Now, first, that the soldiers are able to see their commander in chief. It increases their morale, it boosts their morale. The commanders themselves, from the top to the bottom, to the least, to the section commander, their confidence will rise, knowing that, look, they are, they are not alone in this effort to get this job done. Now, they have also listened to him. He had made some promises in the sense of they will have the equipment, some of the equipment will be coming in soon, which, of course, these are some things they must have been hearing before now. But now they are hearing it from the horse's mouth. And so they are encouraged, and they know, oh, there is hope. Okay? Now, you also look at it from the point of view that when the commander-in-chief speaks, it's a directive. It's not exhortatory. It's not just an advice. It's just, a command. It's not a mere policy statement. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, an ad, it's not an advice. It's a directive. And at that grand strategic level, it means he's telling the theater commander, look, get this job done in the fastest time, as soon as possible. But when they don't have <clears throat> what it takes to fight, what is the, what, what is the implication? No, no, the, well, in this case, now, they've gotten a firm promise, as it were. First, the promise of more equipment coming in. Secondly, the fact that there is going to be supplementary budget to back that up. I mean, you can't get it better than that. I think it's enough assurance for them to take the words of the CNC for it and put in their best. Now, when, when the commander in chief says that, what he's saying, in essence, to the commanders, they will distill it. They will do a mission analysis. 
and they will come up with a serial kind of operation where they will sequence the operations to actually give no breathing space to the adversary, to the enemy. Okay, and they, they know how to do that. They, they know the kind of you know, operation that they will pile up. They will be cascaded in a way that before the enemy recovers from the last one, the next one is coming on top of it to make sure it does not regain the stability. They, they know how to do that. And now they have confidence to do that. And of course, they are sure that they'll be able to get what they need to do that. Well, how soon those equipment will come in will be you know, a matter of another discussion. Now, it, it also means that the, looking at the new chief, who was the immediate past theater commander, of course, he, he has all the information he needs. He has the experience. So whoever is, is, has taken over from him knows that he has the ears of the new chief as somebody who knows exactly what he's going through, not somebody he has to tell some story. And uh, that also helps you know, to shorten the response time between commanders at all levels when you know that the last person, the, you know, what the Chinese call the pecking order, the, the uppermost hand is one hand that knows what the lower hands are feeling and knows how best and how daring the, the things that they need are to them. All right. Okay. I, I, because I, I'd like you to quickly touch on the, the death of Shekau. Mm. Um, the senator is saying that um, there seems to be some peace in Meduguri and because uh, both the, uh, the terrorists are still operating around that area. Uh, if you can quickly do that, because I'd like you to touch on uh, the kind of other battles the military are involved in. The banditry and the kidnapping. There's another kidnapping, Kebi. But quickly, Shekau's death, Iswap getting upper hand. Uh, what do you make of it as a general? Oh, well, I've had the opportunity to talk on this before. It's, uh, it's actually... If not quite a better situation for us. But now, what the president has done has helped to up the game for our troops. Because when you understand ISWAP, you know they have better troops, better equipment. They, they have more international support being tied to ISIS. They, in fact, they have escalated the internationalization of this challenge, as it were. But thank God that this kind of initiative from the CNC will help to fill that gap and to embolden our troops the more. That even though they have perhaps a tougher adversary to face now, they are up to the task. Their, their morale will be, you know, will, will be highly boosted. And then of course the confidence that, is, we always say it in the military that sometimes when soldiers see generals you know, falling victim of certain things, it tells them that nobody is spared. And that increases their morale, they are willing to go. In this setting, where with the president coming himself, and not just this one singular event, when you, when you put all the last, in the last three weeks event, the coming to Lagos, the interview with the rise, and with this, it tells you there is a new mood, there is a new you know, charting right. of the course right. to tackle these security challenges. Quickly tell us, this banditry and this attitude of kidnapping students, the one in Kebi, uh, today, the Federal Government College. How can we stop this spate of kidnapping of students from their schools? Yeah, you can see the, the bandits are taking advantage of the fact that there are too many concurrent security challenges all happening at the same time. And because of that, they know it's very difficult for the same authority to pay attention to insurgents, pay attention to bandits, pay attention to kidnappers, pay attention to the challenges between herdsmen and, and, you know, and, uh, and uh, farmers. So the, the array of challenges coming at the same time is certainly uh, something to pay attention to. But one way to look at it is there's what we call concurrent activities, where every agency is made to tackle areas of these challenges based on their core competencies. And so that while the military is facing the insurgency, and of course, any, some of the other operations they're already engaged in, internal security operations, then we can get the other agencies, touch them up, you know, help them to be able to face this other lighter one that may not necessarily need the military. Maybe they put in, or usually dealing with security issues, you do it in incremental ways, you know, in kind of, uh, you, you project power according to the need. You start from the lowest and to the highest. Usually, if the police is going to deal with an issue, they bring out the 
normal police, you know, the conventional police. When it goes beyond them, then they know they bring out the mobile police. If it goes beyond them, they have special forces, special SWAT, like uh, they change, uh, you know, SARS too. So those kind of escalation of the force to be applied, All we right. also come to play, All right. and that will help. Senator, uh, let me come to you. Uh, you are on the ground, and the question I asked uh, the general here, as uh, uh, re relating to uh, the uh, Shekau, his death, his swap, what are you hearing on the ground? The local engagement of the locals in Boko Haram and this international dimension, what exactly can you tell us from what is happening on the ground? Well, let me say that I'm really impressed by this, the apt capture of the situation on the ground that uh, the uh, General Henry gave out. Uh, having said that, the issue of um, uh, Shekau and the rival group Iswap, the General has already described their strengths. They are very deadly. They are more sophisticated. They have a little international connection, and they have accesses to uh, military armaments and the like. Uh, but then the other side of um, them is that they don't kill civilians indiscriminately like the Boko Haram. And in fact, that was what ignited the fight between the ISWAP and, uh, and the Shekau group. Now the Shekau group has been virtually eliminated. It means that our Nigerian troops are going to face what they know specifically. What was frustrating them most in the indiscriminate killing of civilians and uh, other soft targets, destruction of public properties by the Boko Haram. Uh, but now that the ISWAP is saying, we are just going after the military or the armed forces or the security agencies. Our security agencies are up to the tax and ready for them. They have engaged themselves several times these days and they have suffered uh, serious casualties. Even day before yesterday, they had an engagement in around Firgi, and they had engagement in other places, and most of them, uh, the Nigerian soldiers, as you know, that their, their morale is now up with the, this development in terms of funding uh, their operations, and uh, the, the military hardware is arriving. So on ground, we are feeling com more comfortable, and the, the, the Nigerian troops are ready. Uh, all we are saying is that we should now walk the talk and that is by accelerating the release of the funds and time and the procurement of the All necessary right. uh, hardware that is needed. All right. We don't have time. The, the army uh, are having the numbers now. And um, if we have that, then we'll be able to not only take care of the Boko Haram or a, a side in the Northeast, but also to address the issue, as the general said. If we have good training of police, they can handle our schools. And most of the target now is school, school, school. So since you know the next target, you make sure that the schools are safe. All right, what Senator. happens to the Safe School Initiative? There is right. money for it. The government should find out and then use this fund to make sure that the schools are safe. Senator Ali Ndume, uh, Senate Chair on Army, thank you so much for your time tonight. And uh, uh, General Ayola, Henry Ayola, you want to... Can I just add one thing before... One great advantage on our side right now is the fact that I see the service chiefs really working together. You see, the, you know, remember they changed the operation from Lafia Dole to Heden Kai. Yeah. Heden Kai means cooperation. It means they recognize the need for jointness in the right. operation, and yeah. that will go a whole long way to improve uh, the operation on our side. General, we need to see more of you because your insights are very, very informative and educative. Thank you so much. Thank you for very much. Your time tonight. And that's our show for today, everyone. And thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye bye.